kitchen will be Alex. Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Lipvert, but uh, especially in the context of uh, cloning and uh, managing VMs uh, from a template to uh, produce many similar virtual machines fast. Uh, first of all, I'd like to show you my current uh, setup where I work on uh, with Lipvert. Okay. Wow. So uh, this is in my um, wardrobe uh, with the um, water, uh, the hot water tank. I'm, you know, there's a concept of a system board. Are you sure you're not going to make the Islamic state in any way? <laughs> so uh, you got the system boards with the RAM CPU and everything soldered in. Uh, this is basically a database board with everything on it, there's my modem, I got a managed switch going on there, I'm going to put my server here, and this is going to be a de dedicated router, and when this is done, then I could put this in bridge mode instead of uh, routing mode, and manage all my uh, networking with, uh, with Linux. And I have my server right now waiting on my desk in the, uh, uh, in the motherboards box, uh, but it's working and it's in production right now. This is my hyper. <laughs> this is my um, uh, virtualization server. I have a, say, not, not a big deal. A 16, 16 gigs of RAM, E3 uh, CPU, and a terabyte drive. Um, so I'm waiting for uh, income to buy a more a silent fan and buy the router. But uh, yeah, I've got some uh, 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 No, not the case. I'll just screw it on the board. And, uh, but uh, I've got budget issues. I had uh, like eight cavities to remove, and I had to go to the dentist four times and get wisdom uh, teeth removed. I overshot the uh, annual insurance uh, allowance, and uh, now. Um, in conclusion, use dental floss, boys and girls, because otherwise your dentist is going to cock block you from buying more toys. So I guess a lot of you are already familiar with the virtual manager. Um, if you install uh, Debian or uh, Fedora server and you want to do virtualization, uh, Usually you have that software, uh, I think it comes pre-installed with the base install, base installation. But underneath that, there's the libvert daemon. And libvert is not a hypervisor, but it's a virtual machine management that can uh, connect to many different hypervisors like KVM, but also Xen, LXC, and a um, couple others, VirtualBox. Uh, and uh, it, it gives you a nice UI, either on the command line or in a graphical uh, format to uh, spawn new VMs, connect to them, uh, manage their uh, storage pool and networking. So uh, it's all free software and it's another um, really nice project uh, provided by Red Hat. It's, um, uh, I think both Libvert and Virtual Manager, uh, Virtual Machine Manager, are Red Hat project. Um, you you can also connect to remote hypervisor, so I can be on my laptop and connect and manage uh, the VMs on my server, uh, both free and free, and it's a uh, fewer uh, few components, which. Me, uh, by contrast to OpenStack, where you have to install and configure many different components. Um, so you may want to talk to uh, Jad, who has his own, is his own OpenStack setup. Um, but this is purely for educational purposes. It doesn't do much more than uh, my own setup, which was very easy and fast to, uh, to install and configure. Um, 
but his would scale much more. That's the, the main difference. But if you just want to do some VMs um, for your own purpose on one server, the, then I suggest you go with that. <coughs> Okay. Is it infrared or radio? I don't know. Okay. Um, now the text is small, but you'll see some of the slides have more uh, content. So uh, here's the problem that I have uh, to solve. I want to make many, uh, many uh, virtual machines uh, from a template fast. Like whenever I, I want a couple servers to do some tests, I want to have them cloned and uh, individually uh, customized really quickly. I do have an Ansible, um, uh, um, an Ansible setup going on to uh, install and uh, configure all the softwares and apply roles to machines, but I need something to uh, generate the, the VM and install an operating system and put individual identifiers like the machine ID, SSH host keys, and so on. Um, now, what, um, oh, yeah, right. <coughs> that's not, there you go, okay. Um, some of the solutions that <coughs> exist, of course, in OpenStack, you can use the, uh, uh, you can make an image with cloud in it, in it, but it requires some uh, infrastructure, so it's not really good. Also, uh, uh, manually installing is out of the question. Um, I have tried preceding the installer, uh, the installer questions for the Debian installer. Um, it works well, but still, uh, even if you know the questions by heart or if you precede them, it still takes 20, uh, 10 to 20 minutes to uh, go through the whole installation process. Uh, System D has a first boot service, but only in the bleeding edge versions, not in uh, Jesse stable, for a, for instance. So that doesn't really work uh, because I want to work with the Debian right now. And uh, then there's libguestfs, which is a library uh, and a set of utilities to um, to go into the virtual machine's image and mount them and do stuff in them while the VM is shut down. So this is great because um, <coughs> it doesn't require any infrastructure. You just install the libfs, the libguestfs tools and, um, and I'll show you some uh, very concrete examples. Uh, the website is libguestfs.org. There's plenty of documentation uh, explaining all of the uh, features and tools available. Uh, install with GuestFS tool. Now, GuestFish is the, um, well, well, besides uh, libguestfs, which is the, the library part, GuestFish, uh, uh, GuestFish is a shell front end to the library, so you can use it on the command line interactively. But it also comes with a set of utilities, um, which sometimes uh, call each other. Some are lower level than others, and some are super full feature. Uh, Ver Builder is really cool. It's, uh, it allows you to um, download an image from a repository and customize it. And um, after that, you can easily install it in, uh, in uh, Virtual Manager. Uh, vert edit, edit files right in the, um, uh, the guest operating system, the guest system. Uh, vert customize, I'll show you example. Resize if you want to expand the drives, so it, it will deal with uh, any, any common file systems, even LVM, and uh, you can specify which partition you want to expand so, uh, so that it does exactly what you want. Vert sysprep is one that is um, is the one that makes it possible to do what I wanted. And uh, vert sparsify, if you have an image that had a lot of read writes, then and if it's a um, sparse or a QCAL format, for example, then you can use this to uh, uh, to to shrink it back to only the blocks that are actually used by the file system. Now. To prepare a template, I use, um, well, first of all, I make a basic installation. 
and I do no other customization than uh, the language, keyboard, uh, uh, keyboard layout, and so on, but I don't do any package installation. And I call it uh, Debian Base for, for the host name. Then I shut it down. And I use sysprep, uh, and I specify the domain Debian Base. A domain is uh, how Libvirt um, identifies virtual machines. Now I tell it as a first boot command to reconfigure OpenSSH server. This will regenerate SSH host keys. Uh, of course, I deleted them first. Uh, um, Sysprep deletes the host keys. This first boot command re uh, makes new ones uh, out of random. Um, and I install my SSH key in the authorized keys for the root user. So I can log right in there uh, in the machine as soon as it's ready. So, OK. Now, uh, sys, uh, prep has a lot of different operations it can do. And uh, some are enabled by default. Some you can turn them on. But for example, remove the machine ID so it gets regenerated on the next boot. Uh, remove host keys, history, logs, uh, some cron jobs, uh, DHCP things, mail, uh, change some UUIDs for LVM, and uh, empty some caches. So it, it can understand the, uh, um, the most mainstream uh, Linux operating systems and find all of this by itself. And then, when I'm ready to make a clone. I've got this in a uh, bash script. I use vert clone. This is actually a component of uh, vert manager. So it copies the XML file, generates a new UUID for the domain and a new MAC address for the virtual machine and it clones the, uh, the disk image. Uh, so I gave. Uh, I just have to give it the new name of the domain and uh, the new the file name where I want to clone the disk image. Then I used vert customize to uh, change the host name where wherever it's relevant, and uh, that's it. The rest was done beforehand in the uh, vert sysprep. So uh, after that, I start the machine, and this takes about five. 10 seconds. Um, so um, it, it um, satisfies my objectives directly. Um, now there's also Vert Builder, which would be a great solution, but currently in uh, Jesse's table, there's a bug in the Vert resize part that makes it unusable, but when, it, when that's fixed, or if I install the backported version, uh, then that would be really neat. What it does is download an image from an online repository on the libguestfest.org uh, servers actually, but you can also um, configure your own repo of course. It uh, caches it so you don't have to download it each time and it applies um, whatever vert customized options that you need. So you can uh, specify the size, the host name, uh, you can install packages, install your SSH key, and uh, then I use vert install, uh, uh, both after cloning and after vert builder. Uh, no, not after cloning, because clone uh, is already from installed in the uh, vert manager. But this is outside of vert manager, it just generates the image, and vert install generates the XML file to create a domain in the virtual manager. So I tell it how much RAM I want it to have, and uh, the graphical connection parts, and I tell it what uh, image file was generated on the step before. And uh, I think, oh, and there's a, an, one other thing, uh, the first boot command, how it works, uh, it's really simple and clever. It's, uh, it simply installs stuff in slash user lib uh, vert syscrep. There's a first boot shell, uh, shell script that is called by a systemd service 
that is installed as wanted by the default target. So whenever the system boots, including the first time, it will execute that script. And what that script does is call other scripts that were installed by the vert customize and then deletes them. So they only get run once. And that, that's as simple as, it, as that. And uh, this ends, this concludes my presentation about uh, Vert Manager. Does anyone have any questions? So uh, give us an example of what currently you, why you do you need all those virtual machines, for example? Well, <coughs> I want to uh, replace my all-in-one router bridge, uh, DNS and DHCP server <laughs> with um, separate hardware and also uh, separate systems for uh, one part educational and another is uh, security and, and also performance. Um, so I have a DHCP server, two name servers, I have an open VPN, a mail server, web, database, and I have plans for a uh, couple of uh, for for uh, half a dozen others. So uh, that's that's the whole point. So from these base virtual machines, then I make and I apply Ansible roles to specialize them and, and uh, make them useful. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. So thank you very much, that concludes uh, our lecture.